Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome, or perhaps welcome back, to my channel. It is the second of the month, which means it is time for me to show you how I created my first set of cards using the latest sheet load of cards. Today, that is the October 2024 edition. Yesterday, I shared a look at the new printable and told you how you could download it for free as a subscriber to my channel. If you haven't yet downloaded it, make sure to check out the debut video linked in the description box below, and I'll also have it as an end card at the end of this video. Today I'm back to show you how I made my first set and give you some tips along the way. Also today, the creative team will be joining me in showcasing their first sets for the month. The easiest way to see what everyone has created is click on the playlist link in the description box below, or again, an end card at the end of this video. Not only will the creative team be joining me, but also our October 2024 guest artist. I know that everybody's going to love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. In yesterday's video, I shared some information about the main products I'll be using, and I will tell you again today, as well as any other products and tools that I use. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started by cutting my two pieces of pattern paper per the instructions. For my papers today, I chose two from Not Too Shabby's Sunflower Field paper pad. The first cuts I'm going to make is cutting each piece in half at 3 inches wide. If your pattern paper is directional, you'll want to make sure it's facing the correct way before you make this cut. Now what I'm going to do, from the left I'm going to cut three pieces that are one inch tall and three pieces that are three quarters inches tall. And then on the right, I'm going to make these same cuts except the printable just to make everything flow better alphabetically has those three quarter inch tall pieces followed by the one inch tall pieces. Hello, it is Editing Alicia here, and I just wanted to stop by with a quick update. I had Alma, a subscriber to the channel, let me know that there was a typo on the sketch for the pattern paper. If you notice on the right, there are four piece C's. Now the sizing looks correctly, but only three should be labeled C, and then the last three should be labeled D. If you did download your printable after about 10 a.m. on the first, it should be fixed, but if you didn't, you can just write that in and just correct it on your printable. Thanks again, Alma. Now I'm going to take those pieces I just cut and rotate them 90 degrees, and using the measurements to the left of my cut line, I'm going to start by cutting the three pieces that are one inch tall, and then three pieces that are three quarters inches tall. Now for that last one at the bottom there, my fingers don't fit under the trimmer guide, so I'm just going to bring in a piece of scotch removable tape to temporarily hold that in place while I make the cut. I will use this same piece of tape for all of my cutting today. There is a little bit of leftover at the bottom and later I'll show you how I use that to decorate the insides. For the right half of that pattern paper, I need the same size pieces, but I'm going to start by cutting piece C, which is just 3 quarters of an inch tall instead of 1 inch, and then I finish off by cutting 3 piece Ds. If you find that you prefer cutting all of the one inch strips first on each side or all of the three quarter inch strips first on the same side, go ahead and do that. Either will work. And you'll see here that when I put those pattern papers together, I actually just put the same size in a stack. I don't keep them separate in pieces A, B, C, and D necessarily. While I finish cutting the second piece of pattern paper in the same way, I wanted to take a minute to recognize some channel members. In the month of September, I had some of them earn their one year membership badge. So up on screen now are their names. I just want to say thank you so much for your continued support.
If you're ever interested in finding out about the perks of channel membership, you can click on the join button below this video or click on the link in the description box below. For CS1, you'll want one and a half sheets of a coordinating color cardstock, and you're going to cut this until you get six pieces that are three and a quarter by five and a quarter. I am using Tailored Expressions Pineapple for my matting, and I'm going to start by cutting a large piece into three and a quarter inch wide strips, and that piece that's left over I'll use for future projects, and then my half sheet I'm going to cut again into three and a quarter inch wide strips. Now those I'm going to take and rotate and cut each piece to five and a quarter inches tall until all six are cut. CS2 is going to be your sentiment piece and this is a great one to use up some scraps if you have them. Per the sketch I will be putting a fishtail on each end but you could definitely leave that step off. Now for me I am using Tailored Expressions Toffee cardstock and I actually use this month's channel member bonus and use my electronic cutter to cut mine. Now if you are a channel member make sure to check out the membership tab later today or the monthly blog to find out how to download your SVG. Now if you're not a channel member, no big deal. I am going to show you some different ways to cut these. I have three different ideas on how you can cut those fishtail pieces if you don't use the SVG. So I cut three pieces from my toffee cardstock that were one inch tall. For the first one, I'm going to go ahead and cut that at the three and three quarters inches wide that the sketch calls for. And then I brought in a pair of small scissors and just hand cut fishtails in each end. I start at each of the corners and just cut in at an angle to as close to the center as I can. And I come in from the other side. And you'll see here this works just fine. They just might not be exactly even on both ends. For the second option, I'm going to be using this punch from Stampin' Up! that has a fishtail and a reverse fishtail side. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut my piece of toffee to four inches wide. Because if you look at the punch, when it's inserted there, it cuts off just a little bit at the end before it starts the angled piece for the fishtail. So keep that in mind if you have a different punch, um, you might just need to adjust how wide it is when you cut it originally. For the third and final option, I am just using a square punch from my stash and I'm going to start by punching one end of the strip, trying to get the angle correct so the corner of the square is where the middle of the strip is. Then before I punch a second end, I went ahead and cut this down to four and a quarter inches wide. Now this is wider than the three and three quarters it calls for, but because the fishtail is a lot deeper, I didn't want to cut it much shorter. This does look different, but hey, it's definitely going to work if you don't have the other options. And finally for the cutting guide page, we need our card bases. And this will be three pieces of cardstock cut and folded in half. Now the sketch does call for a side fold, but if you prefer top fold, you could definitely do that too. For me today, I'm going to go ahead and stick with what the sketch shows. So I cut each piece of my toffee cardstock down to five and a half inches wide, and then it's left at the eight and a half inches tall. You could then just fold these by hand, but I do always like to get out my score buddy and put a score in each piece before I fold it. And I do get a nice crisp fold by reinforcing it with the bone folder. That first one there I showed you just all in one fell swoop, but for the remaining card bases I do more of an assembly line process where I do all of the scoring and then all of the folding. Now all of the pieces are ready, so it's time to start assembly. The first thing I'll do is show you how to put the pattern papers onto their cardstock mat. On the sketch, it does show the largest pieces, the one inch tall pieces on the top and the bottom of the card, but you could definitely switch that up if you like the different sizes, different places, or even patterns in different locations. For this first one here, I'm going to show you just like the sketch would show it. And then over on the right for the second one, it was the second option I gave you if you want to have like the one inch is at the top of each section. Let me know down in that comment section below which way you think you'll arrange your pattern papers. 
For myself, I am gonna go ahead and stick with that first one that I showed you. So my sunflower piece is gonna go at the top. I know right now it's a bottom, but I like to flip things around and I try to get it where there's an eighth of an inch border on those outside edges. Then I'm gonna take my second piece from the top, the little plaid, kind of brown plaid, and put that about an eighth of an inch below it. Now instead of placing the sediment strip next, which isn't ready anyway, I'm going to go to the opposite end and do the same things. So an eighth of an inch around the top one and then an eighth of an inch between the next one. That does leave that space in the middle open for the sediment piece later. For this second card front, I'm going to assemble in the same way, but I'm going to flip flop the pattern papers. So now the brown plaid will be on the top instead of the sunflowers. But spoiler alert, I do have a secret for you once I put all of those pattern papers on it. Here you see them together, how they look different, but look, if you turn one around, they were actually assembled the same way. So if you would rather go in the order that you started with, you can do that just to make things simpler, and then at the end, just rotate three of the card fronts. Since that process is pretty repetitive, I did finish those off camera. Now I'm gonna get those added to my six toffee card bases. So I put adhesive on the back, trying to keep everything nice and flat for now. And now here's a place where you could make this your own. You could move that piece left or right if you want, but I went ahead and centered it like it shows you on the sketch. Let me know down in that comment section below how you might make this month's sheet load your own by rearranging or changing things up. I finished getting those card fronts on the bases and then it was time to move on to the sentiment pieces. I will be using my mini Misty so I can set the sentiment stamp up once and stamp all six fishtail banners nice and quickly. For my sentiments, I will be using Thinking of You from this Essential Sentiment Stamp Set from Tailored Expressions. And to go with the browns in the pattern paper, I chose Chocolate Truffle Ink. For this first one, I took a little bit of time, got the sentiment set up, try to get it as straight across as possible, and you'll notice that I put it to the right side of my fishtail. And later when I decorate the front of my card, this will make sense. So you might center yours left to right if you want, that is up to you. Once that was set up, because this is a new to me stamp set, I removed those manufacturing oils with my fingers so that it would take ink well the first time, and then I got it inked up and stamped. I like the way that worked, so now all I have to do is just put in the next fishtail banner, ink up the stamp again, and then continue stamping until I have six sentiments ready to go. Once all of the sentiments were ready, it was time to get them put on the card fronts. Again, keeping everything nice and flat for now. So I added some ATG adhesive to the back of the sentiment strip. And now what I'm gonna do is center this top to bottom between the two middle pieces of pattern paper and then center it as best as I can left to right. You could definitely pop the sentiment up if you wanted, or if you don't want to mess with the fishtail banner piece, you could actually just stamp right on to that center section of cardstock with your sentiment. Again, sheet load is always a great jumping off point for you to make the card your own. You could stop here and call these cards done, but I do want to add a little more decoration, and that's why I left that blank area to the left of the sentiment. I got out the Sunflowers Ephemera from Not Too Shabby, and I brought in some pieces and auditioned them to see what could go where on the card front. I did do the final picking off camera so you didn't have to watch that process, and I also added some foam tape to each piece because now I do want a little dimension. Before I put down my ephemera onto the card fronts, I am going to be using some Barely Art liquid glue on top of the foam tape. This gives me a little bit of cushion and wiggle time to move the ephemera around until it's exactly where I want it. I finished adding all of the ephemera to the card fronts, and off camera I also added some glitter enamel dots from Not Too Shabby. It added a little extra color and a little bit of sparkle. And here are some close-up looks at the finished cards.
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my first sheet load of cards using the October 2024 printable and got a few tips along the way. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go see what the creative team and our guest artist created by using the links that will pop up here in a minute or the ones down in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.